Now, Senator Mike Lee, member of the Judiciary Committee and author of the great book, Saving Nine, the fight against the left's audacious plan to pack the Supreme Court and destroy liberty. Senator Lee, welcome back to the show, by the by. Can I just... I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to redo Roe v. Wade. What I'm interested in, though, at the beginning tonight, how is it possible that the Justice Department can come out with a full-scale, broadside screed against that decision made by the Supreme Court, which is now the law of the land. I don't get this. How can they do this? Well, they can do it because they choose to do it. But in choosing to do it, they violate norms and ethical standards that have evolved over the last two and a half centuries. Look, this is a, a long-standing position that the Department of Justice has always been very, very careful because it's frequently litig litigating before the federal courts, especially the Supreme Court of the United States. When my late father, Rex Lee, was the Solicitor General of the United States, after he argued a case in the Supreme Court, even before the case was decided, he would refuse to comment to the press about it after the fact because he considered himself an officer of the court and didn't want to appear to be unduly influencing the court, or trying to do so, or trying to undermine the court's capacity to decide the case. This is a great departure, not only from that, but from all the previous standards at the Department of Justice, in which even when they were in a litigating position at taking an opposing view, they, they might express the fact that they litigated it differently, but they wouldn't attack the court's capacity like mm. this. This is a real departure, and it's unfortunate. They're trying to delegitimize the court. It's also consistent with their efforts to try to pack the court or expand the court, as they put it. Yes, well, I'm just saying, uh, I've never seen this in my days, but I suppose it's just politicized court. Don't, don't let Democrats, don't let Joe Biden say that Republicans are trying to undermine democracy. That's all I'm saying, because here's his own DOJ. I mean, I thought, look, uh, Senator, I, I, I mean, this is a weird idea. I know this is radical, but I thought the Department of Justice were there to enforce the law, to defend the law to defend the courts. I mean, just, I know that's yes. an off-the-chart idea. Right, right. But they've decided that it's now their position to try to do the precise opposite where they disagree with it. Right. And this is part of what I predicted in my book, Saving Nine. I, when I started writing this over a year ago, I concluded that if we got to this point, uh, the liberals would almost certainly try to delegitimize, demonize, and ultimately change the court by packing it. And that's why I wrote this book. Uh, this is what it looks like. They delegitimize it. They demonize it. They isolate the conservative justices. The next shoot to drop is going to be a, a big, hard push to give Joe Biden the authority to, to add to the court as many of, as four new liberal justices so they can turn it into a political body. I explain in my book why that would be bad and why the last time it happened, uh, disastrous consequences ensued, even though it failed legislatively. Senator Lee, just as another quick aside, uh, are you OK? Do you yourself pray on the 50-yard line? or the 25, or even the end zone, for that matter. Yeah, I, I, I pray pretty much at every yard line, uh, <laughs> or at least I would if I were a football coach. I yes. choose to pray in my own versions of the 50 and one yard line, uh, as the case may arise. But I, I'm very grateful to the court for what it did in the case involving Coach Kennedy. Coach Kennedy had very legitimate free speech and free exercise clause claims, and fortunately those were vindicated by the court today. And um, let me move away from the court. Well, sort of, uh, not, maybe not 100%, but I wanted to get your take. Um, we have something called a Securities Exchange Commission. Uh, it goes back to the New Deal. It created blue sky laws. On, on the whole, I'm sure it's been abused down through the years, but on the whole, it served a reasonably useful purpose, protecting investors. Now we have something called what I'm recall, uh, renaming a Securities and Environmental uh, Commission, where they've issued this 2,000-page, I'm going to use this word again, it's like a 2,000-page screed against fossil fuels forcing every company, uh, not just fossil companies, every single company, to try to tell us um, the impact, the carbon impact of their operations, uh, upstream, consumers, downstream, suppliers, um, indirect, cumulative, 100-year estimates, uh, trial lawyers, paradise, I think, and they have no statutory authority to do this. So for you, it's a twofer. It's an energy issue, but it's also really a constitutional and legislative issue. How is this possible? Why is the SEC doing this? Why don't they stick to protecting investors? 
The SEC is doing this because the SEC believes that it can get away with this, at least for the time being. They're trying to help further the, the accomplishment of a really aggressive far-left environmentalist agenda uh, through the ESG movement. Now, look, there are some impediments to the ESG movement that's been very effective so far at trying to thwart uh, American energy independence, uh, in addition to pursuing a whole bunch of other leftist agendas, separate and apart from those connected to global warming. Um, but there are some impediments that would otherwise apply. One of them involves shareholder suits, shareholder suits brought against the company, against the directors of the company for engaging in malfeasance, for investing or failing to invest as they should, according to the company's best interests. But because the SEC op uh, occupies such a prominent role in, in the case of publicly traded companies, they know that they can immunize themselves against this if the SEC comes in and makes ESG reporting and strict compliance with ESG a part of the SEC's regulatory requirements. But as you point out, Larry, they, they don't have an authority to do this. They're playing with fire here. And there's going to be a lot of pushback, not just pushback, but I think there will be lasting and damaging consequences to the SEC for doing this. Yeah. Uh, if, if what we need to do is overhaul this agency, abolish it and replace it with something new, starting from scratch, that is what we will do. But I, they should not take this step because it is a dangerous one. You know, I just think it's another example, in all seriousness. Uh, they have no legislative mandate to do this, but they're doing it anyway. This is the kind of thing that under it undermines the rule of law. It undermines our democracy. It undermines our institutions. By the way, Harvey Pitt, who was SEC chairman, was on this show Friday. I had him on the radio over the weekend. You know, Harvey's worry is that when the SEC ever gets around to doing things the SEC is supposed to do, it will have lost so much respect. Uh, you know, in the markets, in the courts, everywhere, that no one's going to take it seriously. And that would be a problem for investor protection, and that would be damaging to capital markets, which is what they're supposed to be protecting instead of some whacked-out theories known as the Green New Deal. You're exactly right. Look, government agencies, like human beings, uh, suffer from some inherent maladies. One of them is that when you're not... when you're doing something you're not supposed to do and that you don't have authority to do, you're often, in fact, usually, almost always, in fact, overlooking the things that you are supposed to do, and, and both create problems. That is exactly what the SEC is doing here. And so, look, if if they proceed down this road, number one, there will be litigation, litigation that I suspect they will lose. Number two, uh, regardless of the outcome of the election, uh, of, of that litigation, um, elections that will come in this November will help us ensure that there are lasting consequences to the SEC. The SEC, as we now know it, may not be around very much longer if they proceed down this road. Yeah, I mean, this is all part of the war against fossil fuels. Actually, I want to go a Indeed. step further. We're, we're out of time, sir. But you know what? This is not only the war against fossil fuels, Senator Lee. This is about the war against business in general. The Bidens are, you know, let's not forget their other side of the regulatory uh, maze that they've set up. They're about the war against business. This is about the war against free market capitalism. Just pure and simple. More of the same. Anyway, Senator Mike Lee, I hope the book is selling millions and millions and millions. And uh, thank you for coming back on. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thanks. For, and thanks for talking about Saving Nine. Take care. Yes, sir.